You're watching Hillsong Conference Week, the best of Hillsong Conference from over the years on Hillsong Channel. Welcome to the best of Hillsong Conference. There are plenty of times where people are ready, but it's just not time. So if you will hold on, if you will wait a little bit longer, I'm telling you the promises of God always come through. They are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Settle in and enjoy the experience for yourself as we bring you the best of Hillsong Conference. Good morning, Hillsong Conference. Come on, come on. Has God been good to you? Has he been good to you? Has he been good to you? I am so fired up about today. Hey, this morning, we made it to another year, another day. If, you're, if we're honest, some of us in here didn't even think we would make it to another day. If we're honest, some of us in here didn't even know we'd make it another year, but the grace of God has carried us all year long, hasn't it? Hasn't he been faithful? Hasn't he been good? Hasn't he been right there by our side? Hasn't he poured out his love and his grace more times than we can count? Hasn't he put food on your table? Come on, church. Hasn't he been there for you every single moment of every single day? Hasn't he carried you? I don't know about you, but I'm so fired up about today. I am, I'm like, my head's about to explode. I'm so thrilled, so fired up, so pumped. Hey, why don't, we, why don't we take some time, open up God's Word. You guys ready for that? You guys ready for God's Word today or what? Go with me to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. John chapter 11. We're going to read verses 1 through 6. John chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And the title of today's message is Snakeheads and Saturdays. Snakeheads and Saturdays. Uh, I, I, I want to make this really, really clear, okay? Really, really clear. This particular story, it's the only place that we actually see this story in the New Testament. You've got the four Gospels, but this story that we're about to go into, which is the story of Lazarus being raised from the dead, spoiler alert for those of you who don't know, this story is the only place that we see this particular story story. Lazarus has died, and Jesus is going to raise him from the dead. This gospel writer, the evangelist John, he puts this story as the last miracle that Jesus is about to perform before that last and final week of Jesus' life. So it's as if John Rather, the Lord inspiring John says, I need you to highlight this story. Make it the last one. Put it in a very strategic place. I want to announce to the world this story matters. So with that being said, with that being said, whenever I'm reading the Bible, I try to immerse myself in it. You ought to do this. Don't, don't just read it. Don't let the words just be black letters on a white page. 
Instead, uh, allow this word. It's the living word of God. It's active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It wants to get into the parts of our hearts and our lives that we might not want anyone to mess with. But God's word is breathing. So I, when I'm reading the Bible, and I'm reading the Bible, if it says Jesus walked into a room, I wonder what did the room look like? What did it smell like? Who was in the room? Did, did he walk in happy? Or, or did he, he walk in sad? Did he walk in with a pep in his step? Or, or did, he, did he walk in a little bit heavy? Whenever I'm, I'm reading, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to put myself in the story. So here in John chapter 11, if I'm going to put myself in the story, Jesus is hanging out. We discover in John chapter 10, the last couple of verses that he's hanging out where, the, the, where John the Baptist did his ministry. So he's about 30 kilometers or so away from Bethany where Lazarus was living or Lazarus was about to die. And he's there with his friends and I was trying to figure out what might he be doing. So I don't know. Maybe playing rugby. Can you imagine Jesus as a rugby player? I think it would be a little bit unfair. Or, or maybe he's playing badminton. I don't know if anybody even plays badminton anymore. I don't know. Or may, maybe he's playing football. The, the real football. Not American football, but the real football that the rest of the world calls football. Or maybe he's playing God's sport. Basketball. <laughs> Maybe Jesus, there's 12 disciples, right? So it's five on five, two got to sit out. I'm thinking Judas is definitely sitting out. I'm thinking Bartholomew is definitely sitting out as well because his name is Bartholomew. My apologies for anybody whose name is Bartholomew. Mine is not that much better, Earl. But anyway, <laughs> you've got... You got five on five going on. Jesus is doing step back threes. He's playing like Steph Curry. And, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, a man comes running in. He comes, he comes running in. He, he, he interrupts. He interrupts the game. He, he interrupts the game. He's like, Jesus, 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 you, Jesus, you, you gotta, you gotta come. You got to come to Bethany. The one you love is sick. And Jesus says, oh, okay, okay. The disciples hear it. Then he says, on your way. He goes back to playing. He goes, he goes back to playing. The disciples, well, wait, wait, Jesus, didn't you? Didn't you He's sick. Come, pass me the ball. Pass me the ball. Pass me the ball. He, he, they, they keep playing. And we find out later that Lazarus actually dies. So Mary and Martha are waiting on this miracle, waiting for Jesus to show up, waiting for Jesus to arrive on the scene because they know when Jesus gets on the scene, everything changes. They know once Jesus shows up, things that are wrong are made right. They know when Jesus shows up, sickness has to bow. They know this, and so that's why they called for him. But he does not come right away. 